Joining us now for World Brief and the review of some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Adefemi Akinsanya. Good morning, Adefemi. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Ruben. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Good morning, Rufai. Yeah. Let us talk about what is happening around the world. In yet another escalation of the crisis in the Middle East, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard says it has launched tens of missiles at Israel. The Israeli defense forces say the number of ballistic missiles towards Israel is actually closer to 200. Now, sirens had been going on and off across Israel as the IDF launched intercepted missiles to bring those rockets down. Israel also says that it has suspended landings and takeoffs at its main international air Airport. Iran has also warned Israel that it will be targeted again if Israel retaliates. Now, you may remember that Iran struck Israel in April, and that was in retaliation for an attack by Israel on the Iranian embassy in Damascus, back in Syria. Now, back then, Iran gave far more notice of its strikes, being that they were more so a response to the Damascus bombing, but not sent to cause too much damage. It's unclear at this stage how many missiles are getting through into Israel and what response could be drawn from Tel Aviv. Uh, but we do know that Israel has already said that Iran will pay for its actions and its biggest backer, the United States, uh, amid fears of a full-scale war uh, between the two foes, has also established its support behind Israel as we can all expect. We'll come to you all for comments, but let's move on now to the vice presidential debate between Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio and Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. Now, both relative newcomers to the national political spotlight, but they faced off overnight in the only scheduled vice presidential debate before the November election. Now, the pair tackled a host of issues, including Iran's strikes against Israel, which was actually the first topic of debate. They were asked if they would support Support a preemptive strike against Iran. Let's take a listen to their answers. What's fundamental here is that steady leadership is going to matter. It's clear, and the world saw it on that debate stage a few weeks ago. A nearly 80 year old Donald Trump talking about crowd sizes is not what we need in this moment. But it's not just that, it's those that were closest to Donald Trump that understand how dangerous he is when the world is this dangerous. His chief of staff, John Kelly, said that he was the most flawed human being he'd ever met. And both of his secretaries of defense and his national security advisors said he should be nowhere near the White House. We have to remember that as much as Governor Waltz just accused Donald Trump of being an agent of chaos, Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. People were afraid of stepping out of line. Iran, which launched this attack, has received over $100 billion in unfrozen assets thanks to the Kamala Harris administration. What do they use that money for? They use it to buy weapons that they're now launching against our allies, and God forbid, potentially, launching against the United States as well. Well, uh, I mean, very interesting comments from between the both of them. It is important to note that Kamala Harris, not just yet anyway, does not have an administration. I believe he was referring to Joe Biden. And even then, it, I will say that it was a largely civil and relatively restrained conversation about the issues uh, on tops of the minds of American voters going into the 5th of November election. In that, it was unlike the two presidential debates that we had seen earlier this year. Now, both men spent much more time attacking each other's running mate than each other. There were also some reports uh, that, no that noted that their debate was far more presidential than the presidential debates that we've seen so far. Now, Tim Maltz did have a shaky start, but he did find his footing when he was discussing the January 6th insurrection and also issues like abortion. J.D. Vance, too, had a largely polite outing. So that was the, the back and forth between the, pre the vice presidential uh, debate overnight. And then lastly, Mark Rutter, the new Secretary General of NATO, says that he does not see any imminent threats of nuclear weapons being used by Russia, despite what he calls reckless and irresponsible rhetoric by the Kremlin. Just last week, President Vladimir Putin said Russia was considering changing its military doctrine to regard an attack from a non-nuclear state such as Ukraine that was backed by a nuclear armed one to be a joint attack. Now, Putin's comments came as Ukraine sought approval to use long-range Western missiles against military sites in Russia. 
Now, the former Dutch prime minister, who is now the president of NATO, was speaking at his first press conference since taking over of the head of the military uh, alliance and said that three priorities for his term as secretary general would be to support Ukraine, to bolster NATO's collective deterrence, and to build relationships in other parts of the world, such as the Indo-Pacific. Reply. Okay, so a couple of things. I think the standards in America are falling completely. Mm. If this wishy-washy debate, where they still traded a lot of lies, and especially by JD, both of them lied, but JD has lied more, is called civil and polite, then America has lost their democracy. Mm. I am sad for America. J.D. Vance pivoted on many policies. All of a sudden, you see what he said on abortion? They are now more progressive on abortion. They want women to be able to have access to the rights <laughs> of their body. to appeal to women voters. But that's not the policy on ground. Mm. This was the same person that was seen to have supported an abortion ban when he was just in Senate. Mm. So if this is what they call civil, and both of them didn't have a good show as far as I'm concerned. And that's why when you saw the, I think the poll that came out, it was, I think J.D. Vance was 51, he was uh, 49, I think, Walls. Walls, too, couldn't even respond when it was, the issue of Tiananmen Square was brought in front of him that said, okay, you claimed you were in Tiananmen Square at this point in time. When uh, you, were in, you were in China, when Tiananmen Square thing happened, and they had backdated that he was lying. So many lies back and forth. And they said they talked about the issue. I didn't even see any coherent policy position as regards the issue. Till today, Kamala, after even releasing the economic plan, we don't still know where we are going. As regards that, the economic plan even left me more confused. Apart from, okay, the tax waivers for families, 6,000 tax, 5,000 tax for families and everything. Her plan, too, was going to increase the deficit. It's just that Trump's plan is going to increase the deficit more. Mm. So both of them, it just shows the standards are falling. I mean... So you weren't impressed at all by any of the, any of the candidates? I'm sorry, in general, this campaign, and I must have to say, it's been a trend since 2016 when Trump came on. The, this quality of candidates are falling. The last major quality candidates I've had in recent time in American election was probably Mitt Romney versus Obama, hmm. 2012. Since after the election cycle, it's been slippery stroke. As regards Iran... They had to show that they too could put up a fight, but mm -hmm. it didn't work in their favor. Out of the over 200 missile, none of them hit the target. Mm -hmm. American defense system were strong, Israeli defense system were strong. Israel is going to attack them, but like I was talking, saying recently, Iran does not even have the capacity to be able to get in. Probably what they will do is resort to guerrilla warfare. And the Israeli security service have more intelligence, so that's also going to be hard for them. Mm -hmm. So once they have the backing of America, it's going to be problematic for them. Israel is fighting on many fronts because they are having the backing of America. Right. Probably the people that can deal them in blue with, with their insurgent rockets will be the likes of the Hezbollah, Mercy, maybe yeah. one of them or two of the, all the Houthi rebels that come yeah. in. Which so are backed I by think, Israel and which so I, are backed by so Iran I think as well. largely what it will still be mm. is the case of trying to explore that ceasefire option. But will Israel listen? I doubt because Israel is having the momentum. And that he always fighting for his political career. So it's, it's just a dicey situation. And that's why some concerns are being raised about the Third World War. It's in the offing, really. Mm -hmm. And with all the madness putting the strengthening and all of that, because Ukraine is getting some traction in that war, the world is at a very precipitous situation. It is sad that we are fighting wars, two different or three different major wars, right. after a world pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, some people have, it has been described, actually, as a significant escalation. Right. Even though, like you've mentioned, it wasn't very successful based on Israel's defense and also in alliance with their Western allies, not just Correct. the United States, the UK, Australia, a few of them um, also um, you know, helped in defending and shutting down those missiles. However, what as has been said, it's almost as if that it was almost as if Iran was baited. They took the bait, and now Israel has a position to now say they are going to retaliate. Right. They are going to attack. So what Iran did, even though it didn't hit the target. Right. So that's the conversation going on right now. The United Nations is coming in to say that you know let's keep you know let's um, aim for a ceasefire. Uh, let's think of humanitarian concerns, the humanitarian crisis this could potentially lead to. We already heard stories of, especially in places like Lebanon, for instance, right. where there are displaced people. We know you talked about the kafala system very yes. um, recently. Yes. A number of you know them are stranded because they don't have their passports. Students as domestic as well. yes, students, yes. Uh, domestic staff members are stranded because they don't have their passports because of the kafala 
system. Their buses have fled with their passports. So yes. just a lot of things going on. And of course, um, wouldn't want. And, and this is happening on the back of conversations being had at Onga, where they try to move for peace and yes. you know the escalation of tensions. This is coming on the heels of that. I do believe that Israel is going to retaliate. They now have almost a good, a legitimate reason to, reason to, reason to retaliate to exactly. and then hit the target that they've been wanting to hit. I don't know how Iran is going to fight back. Yes, you've mentioned the Houthi rebels. You've talked about Hezbollah and the allies that they formed. I don't know how strongly mm -hmm. they would, you know, they would stand against Israel and the United States of America. Very quickly on JD Vance. In, in, with regard, regards to his change or shift in position of abortion, he mm -hmm. did say that it was because his people in Ohio voted massively in support. So right. in respect of their views, he, they decided to be a bit more moderate with their stance on a, a abortion. Okay. But of course, it's political speak. They see that it's one of the critical conversations that have happened sure. and the Democratic Party are gaining ground with that narrative. And so they are shifting ground a little bit on that. People did say it was more civil, more presidential, like he yes. says, you know, than, the, than their principles. But let's see how that would work out and, and and hopefully, if Trump would agree to a second um, debate, debate with Paris. Never. <laughs> well, let me see how I can uh, address the point very quickly in a significant manner. First, Mark Root, uh, who is now Secretary General of NATO. You know, a short story about him. When we visited uh, the Netherlands, you know, the Nigerian convoy had arrived. They took us to one uh, location where the prime minister would come. Now, we were there waiting. We didn't know that the Prime Minister uh, of uh, Netherlands had arrived. The man came on top of a bicycle. <laughs> and then he said he was the Prime Minister. So the protocol people were a bit confused. He said, no, he was the Prime Minister. That he was teaching in a school. And he had just left the place. At, and immediately the protocol people started arranging things. He, he even said one of his students was a Nigerian student. Anyway, that's an old story. I think I'm getting old, so I tell stories. No, but all. now he's uh, the Secretary General mm -hmm. of uh, NATO, taking over from uh, Jens Stoltenberg, who was uh, Prime, uh, who was uh, Secretary General for ten years. Now, what he did yesterday, October one, was his first major press conference, and at that major press for conference, he addressed a number of issues, paying tribute to Jens Stoltenberg. Uh, expressing his commitment to the ideas of NATO's mm -hmm. 32 uh, members, saying that they have a responsibility to protect one billion people that fall under the purview of the 32 people. Euro uh, Atlantic uh, security, he yes. talked about that. Uh, supporting Ukraine to win the war. You know, these were the major things. And then, you know, working on partnership and cooperation with allies yes. in the Middle East and in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. That was the substance of his press conference. It was during the uh, interactive session. And the question about Russia was asked by the reporter from Ukraine news agency about nuclear threat. Mm -hmm. And it was in that context that he did not think that, well, nuclear threat is an issue, that Russia will always come up with this uh, nuclear rhetoric. But he said under his watch, NATO will be more concerned about China supporting one of the most difficult uh, wars, you know, in recent times. So that's that about, about uh, you know, uh, NATO uh, Macrut, as he settles down, post Jens Stoltenberg as the uh, Secretary General Indeed. of uh, NATO. Now, the other subject about J.D. Vance, well, the key takeaways from him, you, you made one of the points, that they were civil. But in any case, it's not such a significant event. Mm. It's not going to have any effect on the outcome of the elections. The two persons focus more on their principles. One, they also were Midwestern, you know, diplomatic in most of the discussions. Mm -hmm. They both agreed that gun violence is bad right. and that it has to be addressed. They all, uh, they both agreed that something also has to be done about violence in the United States. But the issues they didn't agree on. October 6th, no, January 6th, mm -hmm. invasion of the Capitol uh, was made it uh, an, an uh, advance. No, was made it an issue mm -hmm. and asked Vance that, uh, okay, Did what do you think exactly. and all that? He said, no, I want to look into the future. I'm exactly. not into, I don't want to look back. I, I don't want to look back. So yes. he tried to dodge the question. Yes. There, there was controversy also on the issue of health care. Mm -hmm. They disagreed on that because uh, uh, Vance I, I was saying uh, Trump, right? That uh, uh, no 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 was was saying Trump, mm -hmm. you know, was opposed to Obamacare, affordable care. He says he has a plan. So he asked the Republican 
to tell us what, is your what plan? the plans are. Yes. You know, and the man said, oh, a 900-page bill that we are working on. You don't expect me to bring it up in a stage uh, uh, debate. There was also the issue about what was Advin saying about his traveling to China 30 times, yes. you know, uh, I think the moderator fact checked him, mm -hmm. you know, and then he said, oh, maybe about 15 times. But some critics said, look, it looks like the moderator was partial, yes. uh, you know, in that regard, fact checking uh, one well, party and, and not, not the fact other. checking uh, the other. And then there was the issue about the pets and dogs that they are yes. purportedly eating in a uh, Spring in Ohio, Ohio. Uh, spring free to Ohio. The dogs. So you know, but uh, <laughs> which I think, they are not doing. Let's be clear. I think Vance That's defended happening. that well. He said his interest is in the people. It's about the people, yes. the American citizens that are in Ohio, mm -hmm. because the migrants have taken over everywhere. They've taken over the jobs. They've taken over the hospitals and all of that. But at the end of the day, it was fact-checked to say. The 12,000 to 15,000 Haiti migrants that are in uh, Ohio, mm -hmm. they are legal, you know, exactly. uh, migrants. So border security, border control, immigration, this was some of the major highlights. But as I said, it's not going to make any difference one way or the other. But it's good to see the uh, vice presidents also sparring. Yeah, By is. popular consensus, I think, in what I've read, you know, people think that... Uh, uh, J.D. Vance performed better. Mm. Whilst didn't wake up early, you know, even so when it took him a while up, to thaw uh, a yeah. little bit, I think. He but thank you. Yes. Let me just mention, Go ahead. Um, Adifemi, that very quickly, on the Israel story, yes. the, the, the descriptions of how effective the missiles were in terms of the launch is different from the, it depends on who, who is reporting. Yes. So on Israel's side, they say nothing happened. On the Iranian side, though, yes. they say that 90% of their targets were, they were targeting some air bases yes. and they were able to fulfill that. But of course, like we said yesterday, that there's always the Israeli, is, there'll be the Israeli side, the Iranian side, and then in the middle somewhere there yes. is the truth. But just to present exactly that side. That. No, thank but thank you very much. Thank you very much. They just said, and this was the Iranian Armed Forces speaking. They were just saying that they targeted military assaults. They didn't say if it hit the target. No, they said ninety percent of it was successful. They said they just targeted military assets. It, it wasn't. That was, it I land. guess. I guess those were the initial the and then subsequent the reports. The issue is that America, the U.S., is saying mm -hmm. that they will protect Israel. Yes. Yeah. The uh, American president Biden says we will fully, fully, fully support Israel. Yeah. Right. Three times. Three times. Just, just in case anybody was unsure of where the United States support is. But let's move on to newspaper headlines across the globe. We begin in Nigeria with this day. And this day leads with updates from Nigeria's Independence Day Parade. Uh, governors across the country also hosted their own events marking Nigeria's 64th anniversary. Further, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has written to the National Assembly seeking a six-year term rotational presidency. Now, the new Telegraph at the top of today's edition uh, is news there that fuel importation saw a 35% increase in September, taking fuel imports to a sixth month high. The article goes on to say that importers have flooded Nigerian port jetties with 165 million tons of PMS worth 140 billion naira. Now, the Daily Trust, amid the pomp and pageantry of the Independence Day parades, were also protests, which are featured, as I've said, on the front page of the Daily Trust. The hashtag fearless in October demonstrations took place in Lagos, Ondo, Oshun, but were halted, uh, according to this headline, in areas like Abuja. Now, the punch stays with the protests, reporting low nationwide turnout. Despite that, at least 10 people were arrested in Kano, and states including Kaduna, Plateau, and Nasarawa largely stayed away from the protest. Let's move on to the Daily Nation in Kenya. And that looks at Deputy President Rugathi Gushaga, who is in the fight of his political life. Now, he's facing impeachment, which he says is due to his outspoken nature. Now, Gushaga captured the limelight in the run-up to the 2022 elections when he vehemently opposed President Uhuru Kenyatta's choice of preferred successor. 
Kenyatta back then was campaigning heavily for former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, but Gashaga allied himself with William Ruto, Kenyatta's then deputy, who was angling for the presidency, if you remember. Now, the cover of the Daily Nation notes how President William Ruto's silence on the matter is deafening and marks perhaps a breaking of their political union. Moving on to the Daily Graphic of Ghana, and it features an image of Jean Mensa who is the chairperson of Ghana's Electoral Commission. And she's asked political parties and other stakeholders to trust Ghana's Electoral Commission to deliver a free and fair election come December. And then moving on to UK papers, the Daily Mirror's front page reads, Revenge from above as Iran retaliates for Nasrallah's killing and Israel's incursion into Lebanon. And also the Daily Express has the US threatening, as we've just discussed, a severe response to Iran's missile attack. Again, taking uh, the, the, the temperature in the Middle East just that much higher. It is I, a lot going on thank there. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Come. Well, hellfire. Oh. Fire from above. From above. The skies of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem mm. lit up by 8 p.m. Uh, yes. Their local time. Yes. Yesterday. Mm. Well, the world, we hope, uh, would survive. Amen. Thank you very much. I do for me. I can survive.